Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is going to be a fairly short, and you know short in terms of me is like 30 to 45 minutes, uh, explanation of module uh, three. As I said to you in the announcement for today's class, knowledge building principles, which is what module three is about, is the heart of an online class. If we believe that quality matters, it's the skeleton of an online class. In other words, this is what should be in there. And if we look at um, Schoology as the brain of an online class, this is the heart. This is where what you're trying to do with an online class really comes to the front. Knowledge building principles were created by a lady by the name of Marlene Scardamelia and a gentleman by the name of Carl Breiter. Um, in writings in the late uh, 90s, it was created at the University of Toronto uh, at their College of Education. They call it OISI, Ontario Institute for Studies and Education. So if you hear me slip into saying OISI, that's what I mean. It's their College of Ed for the University of Toronto. What they were and what they still are is they are researchers. They are not educators in the sense of you and I uh, who teach classes. They are strictly researchers trying to look at why do we see that in most industry and other professional organizations what is it about those places that has meaning for education? Now, this, this is very much front page news here. Uh, we hear it all the time about how schools should prepare people for work. Well, what Marlene and Carl were trying to get at is how do people who work in collaborative groups build knowledge together and test that knowledge. There's so much theoretical behind what they have to say. I'm going to try to strip all that away today and just give you the necessary understandings so that you can get your head around this. Now you've seen this picture I have here in front over and over and over and over and over again. What this picture is showing you are the four components of the knowledge building principles. And they are constructivism. And we know that constructivism is not a theory. It is a reality. It's what we all do. Right now, you are trying to understand this module based upon previous knowledge that you might have had that you can then apply to this, that then helps you develop a new understanding. If you look at this through the lens of the scientific principle, um, you're looking at hypothesis, application, tests, and then a new hypothesis. Collaboration. To put in a cliche, no one of us is any smarter than all of us. Um, this idea is at the heart of the knowledge building principles. Because what Carl and Marlene saw over and over and over again in professional learning groups, what does he mean by professional learning groups? Well, take any professional organization, AMA. In Canada, it was the Pediatric Society, and it was in various industries. But you see groups working together to solve problems, and that is considered the way it should be. Do we do that in school? We do, but not enough. Ideas to the center. This is the most radical idea of what uh, Carl and Marlene were writing about. This idea that the kids' ideas 
about the curriculum became the center of what the teaching was about. Now, that sounds very hippy-dippy, but let me help you understand what it means. The curriculum is never thrown out. The curriculum is always center in the sense of the document that we work from. Now, in other classes, we talk about that the curriculum is not the textbook, et cetera, et cetera. What we're talking about here is allowing kids ideas to explore the curriculum to then understand the curriculum. It allows kids to think about their ideas, research those ideas, postulate theories about those ideas, check to see if their theory holds water. And if it doesn't, that's okay. You come up with a new theory that reflects your new thinking. Questioning. Always, always, always questioning. Why do trees turn colors in the fall? Why don't planets go flying off? Why is it that balls drop when you let go of them? Those are the kind of questions a kindergartner will ask. But if you asked a high schooler in a physics class those same kinds of questions, could they answer you? So, let me go into the Module 3 folder. And we're going to come back to VoiceThread in just a second here. So I'm going to scroll down past that. And I'm going to go ahead and open this PowerPoint. I am not going to kill you by doing this entire PowerPoint. So I just want you to see some ideas here. Let's see if I can get this to come up larger so you can see it better. Don't worry about Cecil and all that. What we find over and over again is that kids have formed ideas that are incorrect. Knowledge is real. The artifacts of knowledge that we carry around inside of us are real. When I say they're real, we believe them. Even if they're wrong, we still believe the artifact until we have overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Now, in this little video here, uh, which you can watch, the children are answering a question about how old do they think their parents are. And as you can guess, you know, the answers are quite hilarious. But that's not unusual. Learning is an active, constructive process, and understanding is critical. As we learn new information, we build upon old information. And if that old information is lacking or missing, then the new has to have a way to go back and get the old so it can make sense of the new. And understanding is critical. This is a model that uh, Marlene likes to use a lot. And as you can see, in this model, the center of the universe is the curriculum. And we have curriculum experts and assessments, and we have the teacher who must flow an answer to the curriculum with tasks and activities that then are passed on to students, and then through report cards, infinite campus, all the ways that we let parents know. This is the center of Marlene's universe. In this idea, the ideas of the kids become the center. Not this idea, where the curriculum, task, and activities 
and the kids' ideas are floating around out here, and the kids are trying to make sense of it all. If we move ideas to the center, what are your questions about the curriculum? How do you think this works? And letting kids explore that allows for a great deal of depth of understanding. These are real quotes. We understand that working collaboratively is the most important piece of learning because it's how we can effectively and efficiently test our ideas about something. I always like using this particular slide because we have this idea, especially in Western culture, of the lone inventor or the lone scientist or the lone thinker through a process of aha moments, serendipitous moments. Something gets created that is unique and new. And so we have the picture of Edison holding the light bulb. Edison invented the light bulb. And now we realize in the second picture, which is the picture of Menlo Park, where Edison worked with a group of technicians and master artisans, this is how the light bulb was invented. No one of us is any smarter than all of us. So now that we understand that learning is an active, constructive process, understanding is critical. Working collaboratively is preferable to working in isolation. I, knowledge advancement is based upon improvable ideas by asking high-level questions. Teaching children to ask high-level questions. When kids have those opportunities to think about the curriculum, this is the kind of thing that comes out of it. And as you can see here, kids, when they do reading, research, thinking, working together, they start building new ideas because all ideas are improved. And you see this a lot in math. Uh, kids will say to their, to their teacher, well, I did it this way, and I got the same answer as you. Oh, well, let's look at how your way would work with another problem. And let's see, then, if you still get, if you still are able to solve the answer, or was it just a fluke? In other words, what's your theory? Let's test it. Let's see if it works. And then we share it. So we, we're now at this point that we're starting to see a, a, a growth here. That learning is an active, constructive process. Understanding is critical. All education is about understanding. Wiggins and McTighe say all education is about understanding and application, transfer. Working collaboratively is more preferable to working in isolation. Knowledge advancement is based upon improvable ideas by asking questions. All ideas are improvable. Knowledge advancement is also based on a thorough understanding of what you don't know. So there's no magic to this. I have a theory about the curriculum, what we're studying. This is what I don't know. I theorize that leaves turn colors in the fall because the lack of sunlight drains away the curriculum, the chlorophyll. 
excuse me, everyone. Someone is calling. I'm going to pause this. I apologize for that. What you don't know is just as important as what you do know. Because the what you don't know informs what you're trying to understand. Unfortunately, what we do in education a lot is, is we teach a sequence or we teach a definition. We never allow kids to apply it or to think about it. And therefore, they don't get a chance to sit there and say, I see what you're trying to see, say here. But what I don't understand, let's go back to the chlorophyll thing before the phone call came in. So in, in that example, I'll, I will theorize that the reason why leaves turn colors in the fall is because the light decreases, the days grow shorter, and therefore the chlorophyll in the leaves can't work as efficiently. Now, that's not the case. How do I know that? Well, I don't understand what are the mechanics of how chlorophyll works in a leaf. Oh, all right. Then maybe we need to go do some research. We need to go do some reading. We need to go watch a YouTube video. Start looking to see if your theory holds up and what is it you don't know that you need to find out to help explain your theory. This is a wonderful video. I hope if you watch this PowerPoint again, you'll click on this. Um, these were three kids from here in Louisville, uh, Conway Middle. And what they're saying, well, you can see what they're saying. You know how they say two or three heads is better than one? Well, it's like the same thing on the computer. It's just like what she said. If someone read a book or something and they know more about it, you can go to their note and get some references from theirs, and it'll help you better answer your thinking. Um, you think about online as being this very dead, flat experience. And what we're trying to say here through the knowledge building principles, that an online experience should be to use Marlene's term, very topographical. There should be places you go in, you come out. You go in, you work in discussion forums, you work with voice threads. You create, you share. That is a very topographical online presence that gives your members a way to share their ideas. There's nothing really new about it. I mean, online discussion groups have been around forever. But what you're trying to do is to push not only just the technology, let's use online discussion groups, but promoting the idea that your ideas are the center of what we're talking about. And all the ideas that we're talking about are improved. I'm going to wrap up here because uh, what it does now is it takes you through um, the process of building an online knowledge building environment. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that using something called Schoology. And we're going to use something called Quality Matters as our framework for doing that. So let me turn this off. And let's look at the expectations for what you need to do for this module. So I'm going to pop back into the top level. And I'm going to show you where everything lives, or not where everything, yeah, where everything lives that will help you do this assignment. So here we are. You're going to design and contribute to an online course of illumination explanation using VoiceThread with text, audio, and ABC, your word cloud pictures, and vi videos illustrating your KB principles. Let me stress something right now. 
These are suggestions. These are not you must, you must, you must. Okay? These are strictly suggestions. Your voice friend will convey the 12 principles outlined in the KB principles document in the module. Your voice thread should define what each principle is in your own words. Illuminate. How do you see the principle applied in a classroom? Describe a classroom activity that employs some of the principles. Then you need to go in and look at each other's voice threads and respond to the voice thread with your own PQP, praise, question, propose. I'll go through this process when we look at how you do a voice thread. So let's jump back in here and show you where these pieces live. This was the PowerPoint that I just did. This is your home document. This is where you can start. And if I open it, what you'll see is that it's a excuse me. It's a table of the principles and what each one, how it fits, what's its meaning, its instructional tactics, in other words, how would you do this, roles of technology, if any, possible obstacles and how to overcome them, and indicators to show what we know we can see what's happening. Let me go through these. So real ideas, authentic problems. So in Real Ideas, Authentic Problems, what we're trying to get at is what Wiggins and McTighe talk about, is that understanding never really occurs unless there's transfer, unless there is application. So with Real Ideas, Authentic Problems, we're giving kids an opportunity to create something that has meaning to them. Um, right now, one of the hot topics in Jefferson County Public Schools is project-based learning. Well, here you go. <laughs> this is project-based learning. Um, and what the knowledge principles are trying to get at is authentic problems. Authentic problems. Um, not some made-up thing that's in a textbook, although there are plenty of those that are really, really powerful. Let's not, I apologize, I shouldn't disregard them but they should have meaning to kids. So real ideas, authentic problems. Improvable ideas, we already talked about that. All ideas are improvable. All ideas are improvable. How would you make this better? Do you have another way of looking at this? Why would someone do that? Always improving, always questioning. Idea diversity. No one idea should be the idea. It should emphasize exploring ideas from multiple sources. The textbook is not the curriculum. Idea diversity. Oh, idea diversity also means that there is a honoring of multiple ideas. If someone comes up with a crazy off-the-wall idea, it's not a bad idea. It's a different idea. Rise above. Taking the information you have and creating a rise above to say, I have a new theory or I have a new understanding. Epistemic agency. Rather than relying on the teacher or tutor's cognitive authority, the participants take responsibility for their own thinking and problem solving. What is it I need to know? What is it I don't know? Kids working together to bounce ideas off each other, jigsaws. Gallery walks, epistemic agency. 
community knowledge, collective responsibility. If you're working in a collaborative group, then the community develops the knowledge together and also takes the responsibility for gathering the knowledge. And this is really hard. Um, you see this all the time. Teach, good teachers will put kids into groups, and there's one kid who takes over and runs the whole show. Knowledge building says you can't have that. It has to be a collective responsibility to acquire new ideas. Democratizing knowledge. Everybody in the group has the same right to take pride in their contributions of their shared ideas. Democratizing knowledge is something that um, when you go into collab classrooms and see children who are there who are from, say, an LD classroom, it's something that uh, doesn't get enough emphasis that everyone's idea within the group has merit. Symmetric knowledge advancement, all in participants, whether they're individuals or organizations, work collectively to provide a reciprocal advance, advance, advancement in knowledge, reciprocal advancement in knowledge. What this means is you can easily move in and out of your information sources uh, and discover new ideas. Well, maybe this group over here has got a good idea. Hey, I found this really great YouTube video. Let's take a look at it. Moving through advancing everything. Constructive authoritative sources. Actually, this one's the easiest one, I think, to understand. Constructing knowledge requires some form of scaffold or foundation. The use of authoritative sources allow learners to deeper their understanding. Kids, though, need to learn how to talk the talk. In other words, where did you get that idea from? Well, my original idea was this, but when I read, could be the textbook, but when I read, I now see that my idea has merit, or I now see that I need to think a little bit deeper about my idea. Knowledge building discourse is all about sharing, critiquing, discussion, and improving. Um, we talked about in the assignment that you're going to go back and look at each other's um, knowledge building uh, voice thread. And I mentioned that you will include in that a uh, PQP slide, a comment. Well, PQP is praised question proposed, directly pulled from this idea. So you look at people's ideas and you go, huh, I never thought about it that way. Oh, you've taken us to a new place. I didn't see that before. Question, how do you see this changing the way we think about the problem? proposal. Let's look at your sources and my sources and put them together and see if something can be created that is new. Uh, embedded and transformative assessment is pretty straightforward. It means that the group work are, is basically self-assessing. Are we getting the job done? Have we tested the theories? Do we have a new theory that collectively we agree upon? Now, in here it says, with the analytic tools within Knowledge Foreign, uh, just ignore that. This is just the good old report out from each group. This is what the group thought. That's what this one means. A lot of examples, ways of doing this. And the pervasive knowledge building, you know, this sounds kind of silly, but if you think about it, what this is trying to do 
is build a culture in a classroom. And how many times have we seen that that has been tried? Um, the rage for the last two years in Jefferson County was mindfulness, getting kids to think about what they're doing. Uh, I K-tip the teacher who taught her students chi, and they would go through a chi exercise. In a pervasive knowledge building classroom, you hear a lot of transactional analysis. You hear people saying things to each other like, what I hear you saying is that you think that Western expansionism was based upon a racism of whites being superior to everyone else. What I have read, and when you have that kind of classroom, and people are voluntary, volunteering knowledge and helping others to understand, it is an amazing place to work in. All right, so those are your principles. Let me close this. That's one place you can go. But I really, really would like you to go to these. So if you click on this link, this is a dear friend of mine, Richard Messina. And if you click here on the 12 principles of knowledge building, what you'll see are videos where people are explaining them to you. I'm not going to go through all those videos because that will take me a while. But I just wanted you to see that that is here. Now, if you want to see real examples of knowledge building in real classrooms, here you go. So in this classroom, what we're seeing And as you can see, the, the teacher is setting up a science experiment that she wants the kids then to attempt and to come up with their own ideas. Again, here's another one on sound. I think this one has to do with kids working together to come up with a new ideas. And this shows the knowledge building circle um, routine that when you see a you see a classroom that has achieved that high level of knowledge building in other words it's pervasive to use the principle pervasive knowledge building it just flows in and out of the conversations that go on in the classroom so we have these two that are source material for you to use. And then down here, one more time, <laughs> is another video that literally goes through that literally goes through each one of the uh, principles again and explains it. I would, if I were you, look at all three of these before you start your voice thread. And that way you'll have an idea. Now, VoiceThread, if you've never done it, I think is a beautiful product. You're going to click on the link. It's going to take you into the VoiceThread. If this is the first time you've been into the VoiceThread in this course, you must click on Course View. Otherwise, when you create something, it won't end up in our course. You'll still be able to have it. It'll still be your VoiceThread but I'll have to help you move it into the course. Not the end of the world if you do it, but if you do this, it just makes life a lot easier. It says there's no voice threads found. Well, yeah, we haven't made any yet. 
it says, do you want to create one? Yes, I do. So at this point, you're going to create a new void thread. And void threads are very easy to make, but you must do some work ahead of time. So on the one hand, you have that document that we talked about, and you have that open so you can see what you're working with. And you also may have a PowerPoint, because a lot of people use PowerPoint to do their voice threads, and that certainly is fine. Uh, some folks, oops, I'm looking for the document. Some folks use uh, just pictures, and then they talk. Well, that is really perfectly OK. So you've got this open. You've gone through. You've watched the videos. And now you're ready to start putting together your own understandings of what a voice thread would be that would explain to us the real, idea, real ideas and authentic problems. You need to talk to us about the instructional uh, way that you could see it in the classroom. Is there any technology that supports it? Uh, obstacles. In other words, you're taking this document and you're going to put it over here. I am a firm believer in the idea of a picture is worth a thousand words. And so putting a picture in that represents what you're doing and then just talking about it. Let's see if we can Google this and come up with a picture. So if I Google that and I tell it I want to see images, I can start looking around in here. There's a good picture. I might use this picture and talk about how the teacher and the student negotiate their understanding of what the idea authentic problem might be. Now, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, you could basically download one of these pictures, which is the direct lift. I don't want you to do that. I want you to think about it and find ways of explaining it. And then what you do is you click on the media, and you can tell it to upload it from your computer. And so on your computer, you might have this little PowerPoint you've already made with all 12 of the principles in it, where you basically talk about um, these four ways of looking at it. And I'm looking right now to find a picture. I'll tell you what, we'll just put me in. How about that? So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put a picture in. And it's going to be uh, Steve. We'll just say Steve for right now. Even though it's spelled wrong. Steve. Okay. And we'll say. As you can see, I now have my picture in here. You're going to put in multiple slides that explain each one of the 12 knowledge building principles. Realizing that I realize this is a lift, this is a this is a big lift. But once we get this into our head, then it's going to help us then when we think about what we're doing otherwise in our Schoology and our uh, Quality Matters. Because Quality Matters is just nothing more than a fill in the blank kind of thing that you you follow. Last thought about VoiceThread, please, 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 oh God, please. Make sure that when you are finished, and you don't have to be finished, finished, but do not leave your voice thread until you click that button right there. And it will tell you that that's where it's going to save it. And you're fine with that, so you click on it again. There's your voice thread. If you don't do that, your voice thread doesn't appear. Now, you'll say, but Steve, I wasn't ready. I wasn't finished. Fine. It appears here. There's the edit pencil. Click there, and now you're right back to where you were. Work, work, work. Make sure you share and return to course. Don't X out.
All right. If you have any questions, you know how to get hold of me. You can text me at 502-457-2937. Uh, I hope you don't feel like this is too onerous of an assignment. I think it's fairly straightforward. It's asking you to do some serious thinking. And it's giving you lots and lots and lots of resources. I will probably come back to this next week and go over it again because you need more than one week to definitely to get this done. Uh, and then we will move on to quality matters. We only have two more modules to go. And then we are done. So as I've said many, many times, I'm always here to help. Uh, take your time with this. Watch videos. Read things. Think. And then put together something amazing in VoiceThread. I'll see you next week.